If we want to understand how muscle works, we need to look at the organization of the tissue. We'll start by cutting a muscle in half and looking at a cross section. There are three layers of connective tissue that maintain the shape of the muscle and serve as a route for blood vessels and nerves. The outermost layer is called the epimysium, which surrounds the entire muscle. Deep to the epimysium, we see multiple muscle fascicles, each surrounded by tissue called the paramysium. The endomysium is connective tissue that separates the individual muscle cells, called muscle fibers. We need to dig a little deeper to find the proteins that convert energy from ATP into force and motion. We'll redraw an individual muscle fascicle surrounded by the paramysium, then the individual muscle fibers separated by the endomysium. Then we can pull an individual fiber out of the fascicle and zoom in further. The muscle fiber is a cell, so it has a plasma membrane. The plasma membrane of a skeletal muscle fiber has a special name. It's called the sarcolemma, which will draw deep to the endomysium. The inside of the cell has the same organelles you would expect to find in any cell, like mitochondria and nuclei. Skeletal muscle fibers are special in that they have a lot of nuclei. There are long cells that span the length of the muscle. It's helpful to have genes along the length of the cell so transcription and translation happen close to the places where we need the proteins. Finally, we see a lot of structures called myofibrils, organized lengthwise along the muscle fiber. Myofibrils contain the machinery that causes the muscle to shorten. We'll zoom in even further to see what this looks like. So starting with the myofibril, we see it's a string of contracting units called sarcomeres. Each sarcomere is made of thin filaments, shown here in green, and attached to the end of the sarcomere, and thick filaments in purple, and these are made of the motor protein called myosin. Myosin is a protein that captures the energy from ATP and uses it to produce force and motion. We'll zoom in on a single myosin molecule to see how that works. Myosin can bind ATP, take the energy from one of the bonds, and cock itself into a high-energy state. It's a lot like a slingshot cocked and ready to fire. The myosin then binds a thin filament and snaps it towards the center of the sarcomere, releasing the stored energy. This cycle repeats itself over and over as long as the muscle is contracting. So if we look at the thick filaments, they're organized so that the motor proteins on the right side of the sarcomere will move the thin filaments to the left. The motor proteins on the left side of the sarcomere move the thin filaments to the right. When the muscle contracts, all the motor proteins are moving at once, which moves the ends of the sarcomere towards the center. All of the sarcomeres in the muscle fiber shorten at the same time, which means the entire muscle fiber shortens, shortening the muscle organ.